Just days until the election, do you know who's running in our community and what they stand for? Voters are ready to hit the polls. Tonight, I'll give you a rundown of who's on the ballot and what issues to look for. Also, Elon Connection. A recent Elon grad is hoping to enter politics already. We'll introduce you to the candidate, what he is running for, and what he hopes to do if elected. Tea time. The Tea Party movement is picking up steam. How are they doing in Alamance County? And what do students here at Elon have to say about them? And a panel of Elon students and faculty are weighing in on some of these issues. They'll take a shot at predicting how all the races will pan out ahead. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Drew Smith. We begin with the Senate showdown here in North Carolina. Incumbent Senator Richard Burr, a Republican from Winston-Salem, faces off against North Carolina Secretary of State Elaine Marshall, a Democrat from Lillington. David Hodges and Julie Morse are covering the campaigns and join me. David, we'll begin with Senator Burr. He's currently leading in the polls. What's the feeling on the campaign trail? Well, as you said, he appears to be ahead, but he and his campaign team aren't taking anything for granted until Election Day and the results have come. Now a little bit of background and policy stance. Burr has served in Congress for 16 years, first as a representative and for the last six years as a senator. Burr is a ranking member on the Veteran Affairs Committee and advocates for improved health care for U.S. veterans. On the economy, Burr wants to reform the tax policy and make common sense energies that make costs predictable. He also believes in innovation is that is fueled by education and wants to improve the public school system. On health care, Burr thinks reform needs to be started from scratch. He wants these reforms to reduce health care costs, not increase them. Senator Burr's campaign trail had a stop in Alamance County last weekend. Phoenix 14 News was there and got a chance to speak with the senator. Senator Richard Burr's Republican road to victory took a lap around the triad and found its way to Alamance County GOP headquarters. His message, get on the campaign bandwagon before it leaves for good. For the next 10 days outside of work, commit yourself to the process. For many though, the trip is already over. According to the nonpartisan group Democracy North Carolina, early voting is up and in favor of Republicans. Burr says voter passion has led to the early turnout. The intensity is so high that uh, we're seeing uh, more people in an off-year early vote uh, than we've ever seen in, in the history since we've had it. Public intensity has also been aimed against long-serving politicians in Washington. Burr has served 16 years in the Senate, but he says he has nothing to hide when it comes to his track record. Uh, I'm not running from uh, any of the issues that I've uh, been outspoken on. Uh, I think they're consistent with where the outrage is in America, and I feel comfortable with that. And I expect to be held accountable. Senator Burr will travel on his campaign bus Saturday, starting in Pinehurst and ending in Lincolnton. All right, and thank you, David. Now, Julie, you've been following uh, Lane Marshall's campaign. What does she say she'll bring to Washington? Democrat Elaine Marshall says she'll be an advocate for all and work to help small businesses. She's the current North Carolina Secretary of State and is originally from a small farm in Maryland. Marshall was not supported by her party, but beat out the Democratic candidate in the primaries. She says because of this, she has no obligation to the Senate's leadership. During her time as North Carolina Secretary of State, Marshall has helped to cut business expenses for small businesses. She has also received international recognition for her work to protect against copyright violations and counterfeit goods. Now, on the issues. When it comes to the economy, Marshall's proposing a one-time $1,200 tax credit for middle and lower income families. If elected, she will work to make Wall Street pay for what happened during the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. Marshall wants to prevent public officials like teachers, firefighters, and police officers from losing their jobs at a time when they are most needed. She wants to increase funding for federal Pell Grants that give students access to college who can otherwise not afford it. And Marshall wants to bring home the troops from Afghanistan. So I reached out to the Marshall campaign for an interview but was unable to get a comment. Drew? There is one more candidate in the U.S. Senate race. Mike Beitler is running as the Libertarian candidate. He works as a professor at UNCG in the Business and Economics School. Beitler also works as a management consultant. He thinks small businesses are behind job creation and wants to lower their taxes to support growth. He also supports the withdrawal of troops from Iraq and Afghanistan. Now David and Julie will continue to follow this race closely leading up to Election Day. David will be with the Burr campaign and Julie will be with the Marshall Camp Elections Night. Join us right here November 2nd for updated results throughout the night and a special 30-minute show at 10 o'clock.
two candidates are up for the sixth district seat in the U.S. House of Representatives. Republican incumbent Howard Coble faces Democrat Sam Turner. Coble has represented the sixth district in Congress since 1985. He opposes government-run health care and promotes cost-cutting programs to support the poor and jobless. On the economy, Coble opposed the stimulus bill and suggests prioritized spending, paying down debt, and tax cuts to rebuild the economy. Democrat Sam Turner in a com is a commercial pilot and an Air Force retiree. Turner supports universal single-payer health care and says the troubled economy is a result of 30 years of bad decision-making. He believes Republican values of deregulation, free trade, and tax cuts led to the tough economic times. Voters will also make selections in the races for state House representative and state senator. Republican Dan Engel is running unopposed to keep his seat in the state House's 54th district. Democrat incumbent Alice Bordson is defending her seat in the state House too. Former IBM executive Roger Parker is challenging her in the 63rd district, which includes Mebane and eastern parts of Alamance County. The 24th state Senate seat is also up for grabs. Democrat incumbent Tony Forrest is running against Republican Rick Gunn and Libertarian candidate Barry Coe. This isn't the first time Forrest and Gunn have faced off. The two also ran against each other for state Senate in 2008. While no candidate in the partisan races is on the Alamance County ballot identified as a Tea Partier, the movement is trying to, to make its presence known locally. Sophie nielsen Colding joins us with more. Sophie, is the Tea Party movement gaining any traction here? Drew, the Tea Party is grabbing people's attention, especially with elections coming up. I spoke with some Elon students to see what they think about this conservative movement. As a Republican, I like the Tea Party. Catherine Holt was an intern for the Republican Party last summer. She said she thinks the Tea Party is boosting Republican support. I like their values. I think that even when they're not spot on, they're a whole lot closer than a lot of other people are. College Republicans treasurer Max Pilon supports the Tea Party, but has some reservations about their opposition to government agencies. I want to be knowledgeable about where the food is coming from. That's how a free market would eliminate bad food supply. I don't have the time, I don't have the ability, I don't have the knowledge to do that. So I've asked government to do that for me in the form of FDA. Then there are those who haven't made up their mind. Eva Hill is co-chair of College Republicans and says there's more to learn before making an opinion. I'm still trying to learn about the party and what they're for, what they're against, what they're trying to achieve. More and more people are concerned about the direction our country is taking. Steve Carter knows the Tea Party. He's the movement's organizer in Alamance County. As a Republican candidate himself, he knows that Tea Partiers help Republicans. And when you look at Alamance County, most of the candidates we support here are Republican, but there are some candidates that aren't Republicans that are on our approved list also. And that's why Holt is optimistic too. It's not another party. I don't think it's ever going to be another party. I don't think. I think that it's going to really help the Republicans. Come election day, political observers will find out just how much the Tea Party has helped Republicans. Now I'd like to introduce our panelists. They are seated here at the desk. Dr. George Taylor has been at Elon for more than 30 years. He teaches in the political science department at Elon and is also the director of the Elon Institute of Politics and Public Affairs. Next is Jack Dodson. He's the news editor at The Pendulum and a junior here at Elon. Taylor Forshee is a senior political science major and the past president of the College Democrats. Taylor Forshee also works with the Democratic Party here in Al Alamance County. And Max Pyland is a sophomore at Elon. He is also the treasurer of the College Republicans. So we've been talking about the Tea Party. Let's talk a little bit more about it. According to the September Elon poll, more than half of North Carolinians are familiar with the Tea Party. Of those familiar, 46% view the movement favorably and 40% 40, uh, 40 not so favorably. So Max, let's start with you since you are associated with the College Republicans. What is your view on the Tea Party? Um, my view on the Tea Party is that it fulfills a very valued and required thing in politics at this time, which is getting people engaged and really questioning what government means to them and what they want their government to be involved in. Um, so if that's the form of the Tea Party, that's very beneficial. So, Jack, you've been working in news media. There's been a lot of coverage of the Tea Party. People like Sarah Palin really pushing forward on this. There's been rallies. What is your perception of the Tea Party and, and their effect on taking on media and getting out attention? I think they've done a really good job of getting in the media. I mean, you've heard more about them than you've heard probably of any third party this quickly, too. I mean, they, it's only been the last year or two that this has really happened. Um, I actually was covering one in Moore County about an hour and a half south of here at one point, and it was really interesting to see how it affects all people in, uh, everywhere, but it, it has kind of a local movement too, which 
in turn, they're in the national media and they're also in local news because there's local versions of the Tea Party everywhere. George, what is your view on the Tea Party? I think it's, it's very interesting to, to see it come about. Uh, it's been a reaction to the last 20 years of politics. Uh, one of my problems is, is that in the last 10 years, politics has, has lost the civility of interaction. And this, the Tea Party tends to go that way also. And I think until we can get civility back in politics, this system is going to be broken. And Taylor, just as a quick reaction to what do you think about the? the uh... um, I kind of agree with George. I think that it's a great it's great to see them out there, and like the other panelists have said, it's nice to see a new voice in politics. I do think they've been a bit divisive, and I would also like to see civility back in politics. All right, thank you very much, and we'll be coming up right back here in a moment. The heated sheriff's race right here in Alamance County. Our David Hodges will join us again to talk about the two candidates and the issues they are discussing and Elon Connections, a recent grad and Elon staff member both on the ballot, what they're running for and what they want to do coming up. And our panel is sticking around to talk more about student engagement in this election. We'll be right back. The Alamance County Sheriff's race is a contentious one. Republican incumbent Terry Johnson is facing off against Democrat Ron Parrish. David Hodges has been following this race as well. How do these candidates differ? Well, Drew, Terry Johnson and Ron Parrish have worked with each other before, but now that they're facing off in a midterm election, there's no love lost between the two. Johnson is running for his third term as sheriff. In that time, the Alamance County Sheriff's Office budget and personnel have more than doubled. Much of the budget gains are due to an increase in revenue by leasing jail space. Johnson has also helped develop a sexual offender registration program as well as a gang task force unit. Ron Parrish worked in the Alamance County Sheriff's Office for seven years before retiring in January of 2009. He's criticized both the sexual offender and gang task force programs for being in disarray and lacking leadership. Both candidates agree about how 287G has been used so far, but they disagree on how to handle the ongoing Department of Justice investigation looking into possible discriminatory policing. Here's what they have to say. If I have an employee that is discriminating in any way, whether it be uh, against the Hispanic population, profiling, whatever, they won't work here long, I can tell you that. I don't believe that anyone is intentionally profiling anyone. However, the stonewalling with this DOJ investigation creates a perception, rightly or wrongly, that we may be doing something wrong. When voters head to the polls to decide the top law enforcer in Alamance County, they'll also have a chance to decide who's handing down the punishments. Here are the candidates for statewide judges' seats. There are four regular seats up for grabs on the Court of Appeals. Sanford Steelman is unopposed. Incumbent Anne Marie Calabria runs against Jane Gray. Incumbent Rick Elmore runs against Stephen Walker. And incumbent Martha Gear will face Dean Poyer. In the race for the state Supreme Court, current Court of Appeals judges Bob Hunter and Barbara Jackson are challenging each other for an open seat. There is one special election for a Court of Appeals seat. It's an instant runoff with 13 candidates seeking one seat. It'll be on the bottom of your ballot. You'll be asked to mark the, your first, second, and third choice. If no one gets more than 50% of the vote, it will instantly examine second and then third choices to get to that 50% majority for one candidate. You can find a more thorough explanation on ncvotered.com slash instant. Back in Alamance County now, the race for district attorney is between Democrat Pat Nadelsky and Republican Rob Sharp. Nadelsky is the current district attorney and was appointed in late 2009 when the former DA was appointed to be a judge. Sharp is a defense attorney and the former assistant county attorney. The district attorney position is a four-year term. The Alamance County commissioners also have three seats up for grabs. Incumbents Ann Vaughn, Bill Lashley, and Tim Sutton will be facing off against Henry Vines and Brandon Black for two four-year seats while Republican Tom Manning and Democrat Jeremy Teeter are running against one another for the one two-year unexpired term seat. Manning has served on the Alamance County School Board for 17 years and in Elon Connection, he is the board member for the School of Business. And Teeter also has a strong Elon Connection. He's a 2010 grad.